Hi, uh, welcome to the start of the stream. Um, we had some technical issues at the start, so the audio for the first 10-15 minutes are going to be, um, I think the technical term is not super duper great. Uh, it's going to be fixed later on though, so just stick in there. Here we go. Oh, okay. Good. Grant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's recap. This is the third time we've tried to restart this. Uh, I'm sure it's great now. I'm Knorr and this is... Martin, I'm getting the feeling we should have name tags. We should. <laughs> it should come up at the bottom. Uh, yeah, so a bit of a rough okay. start on the stream. Hopefully, uh, everything should be sorted now. Um, we, had, we had some issues. I fixed them and then there were some other issues, which magically just worked once we... Try, turned it on and off again. Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> um, so uh, let's let's get over. What are we doing? We are the Blorg, and we're making okay. friends. So what? I'm starting over from the beginning. You should. Yeah. So we are the Blorg. Hooray for us! Oh, uh, I need to fix one more thing, but you can explain this while I fix it. Excellent. So last time we took our friendly but extremely repugnant green blobs from our Blorg home system. We colonized two worlds in the Kerbus system. We encountered these guys. The really mean reptilian took a bunch of our planets. We encountered these guys, who are also not very nice. And we encountered our truest space friends, the Federated Shrakon Nations, who like us not so much for our charm, because let's face it, we have no charm, as they just like us because they are utterly terrified of their neighbors. More <sighs> importantly... Just like me and Tech today, apparently. Apparently. Terrified of my neighbors. <laughs> More importantly, we met these guys, who when we met them were a pre-FTL civilization with space flight, and upon achieving faster than light travel and meeting the Blorg, they immediately decided that all alien life had to be exterminated. Which is kind of an understandable reaction to meeting the Blorg. Yeah. Regardless, we decided that... Uh, can you turn down the in-game audio, please? We'll do that. So everyone can see our sweet settings. Do it like half. Yeah, that's good. Hopefully. Uh, Hopefully that's a bit better. Regardless, we decided not to hold their prejudices against them and to no. make them into friends. So we sent our friendships, mm -hmm. and we sent our ground huggers, and we basically invited ourselves to all the parties on their planet. Yeah, all in all, great success. And yeah, there's a few things we want to do now. Uh, we do have these guys around us, and we do have our mortal, sorry, not our mortal foes, our friendly rivals. Yes, friendly rivals. The United Tabadoran Bloc. That, so, that stole our possible nightclub location early on when we were exploring mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. most people did not like we were like oh you're so fast i wish we were fast then we can make friends yeah it's kind of terrible and you know we might have a conflict with them coming up and we have these guys who we definitely want to invite to our party but they're still like mm, sounds soon, good, but soon. i'm a little busy that day yeah apparently our heart on our flag has gone missing but we are playing on the latest possible build right so yes. there are always going to be some Probably. some things uh don't worry about it, it it's uh that's what that's why it's here now <laughs> not <laughs> like it'll be fixed at some point i'm sure i'm sure us losing our heart had nothing to do with invading another planet well i mean you could look at it like we gave our heart away that is a very nice way to look at it that's Thank how you. we're gonna look yeah at it. good that good. is the official story so i do have a plan to get these guys to accept our party invite but first, we need, we have this new resource, right? We have all of these friends. The problem is they all live on their own planet. And you know, that's gonna be problematic because we wanna invite them to all the Blorg parties, but they're far away. Mm -hmm. So how do we solve this? Well, I have a space station. No, 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 no. We solve it through. Oh. So there's a little policy here called the resettlement. Because, mm -hmm. you know, right now we are forbidden from making people move. Yeah. You know, with really elaborate invites. Yeah. And I actually don't know why we're forbidding that. 
No, that's weird. Audience is uh, audio is gamey apparently. I'm gonna I'm gonna go fix that while you explain this. Uh, There's a lot of issues. Technical today. issues. Yeah. So I'm gonna change this policy to allowed. Now we are allowed to forcibly invite people to our worlds. So we're gonna do just that. And we're a little tight on space on Blorg, so we're gonna have to clear something. I'm thinking we can clear these two. But Kersonia would be good, I think, for some bird friends. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and we're gonna hit resettle. And what this does it, it, is that it lets us move population between planets. Which normally normally you can move population freely around on a planet, right? But to move them between planets, you need to have a particular policy. But and you cannot move pops to and or from a planet that does not have a planetary administration. Meaning if you have a completely newly set settled colony, you can't just throw all the pops on that colony to fill it up. But we'll be moving people from T Valdra to Kersonia. So I'm thinking that guy. Oh, that guy looks great. That guy. Oh, uh, actually, he's on a mine. He's kind of busy. Oh we'll take no! This guy. He doesn't look like he's doing anything fun. Yeah, so I'm I'm tr I'm moving some knobs around. So hopefully the audio should be a bit better uh, from here on out. But it, this is always kind of tricky. So yeah. thanks for looking out, everyone. And I think everyone else looks kind of busy, so we'll move one of them to Blorg as well. But we just want, you know, we're Blorg. We, we don't need that many friends. In fact, having too many friends might just overwhelm us. We need to actually get used to having more than one or two. So we're going to resettle this guy at a pretty hefty influence cost. And now we have him living here. And for some reason, his happiness really went down when I moved him to a Blorg world. But, you know... We can fix that. We can fix that, right? It's all going to be fine. I'm also going to go ahead and upgrade these farms. And then I'm going to go ahead and on pause. So there's one more thing I want to do with this world. Uh, but we're going to wait until Blorg has cleared its tile blocker. So something else we wanted to do was to invite these guys to our party, right? But they're not quite willing to come. Because, well, they, they just don't really like the idea of going to parties. And we have to at least respect that a little bit, because they're our friends. We have to respect their differences, right? But I have a plan. So these guys have... A button. Hmm. What did... What, what, what's going on? I had a plan. The plan was that they were they were supposed to have these guys as rivals, but they apparently don't anymore. What the? Hang on, are they trying to make other friends? I think so, and what's more, these guys have declared us our rivals. Hmm, so my plan was to declare these guys rivals in order to get the our friends into our alliance slash party. But apparently they decided to kiss and make up with the Shabtax, who have now declared us a rival. That's not so good. Well, we're gonna declare them a rival right back. But this means it's gonna be a lot harder to get these guys into our party. Oh well. So. That didn't go exactly as planned. No, no, it it didn't. So our 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 new friends are no longer ri or like only are they? Do they have any rivals? Uh, yeah, they still have these guys yeah. as rivals, but they used to have both of these. Mm -hmm. And when I would would rival these guys, they would accept the invite to alliance because we would have more enemies in common. Yeah. But apparently, in the time between I unpaused and I went into this menu, they removed the rivalry. With these guys. Because, you know, nothing can actually go the Blorg's way. Th these bastards. I mean, let's not let's not be too no. harsh. I mean, they are our friends. We have to understand them. Mm -hmm. It's just sad, because now we can't really form an alliance. Uh, tragic. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> apparently, people are complaining about the audio again. But I have 
I, I have Bjorn in the booth, uh, so hopefully he can help us out because he's like the expert. Whenever I need uh, help with cables and stuff, I'm like, Bjorn, okay. is this supposed to do this? Yeah, uh, this is technical issues the stream, but you know, it's getting better. I mean, it's no one ever said friendship was easy. Okay, well, this is at least encouraging. So our mushroom friends have sent us an embassy. Ooh, so now we both have an embassy. That means they have people on our planet. That mm -hmm. means can we can invite them to a party. Yes, I'm. I'm not falling for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my hat keeps falling off, so I'm just gonna put it right yeah. here and make space great again. So now we have cleared the space here. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little more resettle one. So I I hadn't realized this before, but the Blorg um, are actually they do have different color va variations. I and I saw those during species creation, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize they actually show up in game as well. Like, they do, and this is kind of new. I don't think we had it last time. Okay, sweet. So I wasn't. <laughs> I was like, I yeah. I miss this. That's neat. No. I do think our our Blorg are a little being a little ungrateful here. Apparently, they're not big fans of living next to the xenophobe. What? I mean, that's come on, guys. You're Blorg. Yeah. I, mean, I get that he keeps like trying to kill your families, but come on. Be supportive, okay? Yeah. He's a friend. He's actually not. Oh, now now he's trying to move. No, 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 no. This is not okay. I need to stop him. No. Oh, so, so what you're trying to do is, because we had it set to free migra migration, yeah. even though we ran a pop back, they were like, no, it's free migration, yeah, we're getting out of here. So he started moving again. Apparently, it's too late to stop him. He's fleeing, Blo he's fleeing Blorg. Yeah. But, okay, in the future, our friends will not be able to leave. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so it's, it's going to be a longer party. Indeed. Right, so we have an inactive planet we're building right here. So we had we had uh, last time we we had some problems on one of our planets where people were getting a bit se uh, secessionist Ooh. faction. Hold on. Yes. What? Okay. Come on. Uh, come on. Bring it. Bring it. Yes. Nice. Hold on. Just that. <sighs> ah, it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> so bad at high fives. <laughs> okay. We're being invited to an alliance. Agree. We are agreeing on this. They invited us to a party. Wait, are they about to have a f fight? No, it's oh because we're yeah, now our, in a party. We can see their. We, uh, yeah, and now we're no longer guaranteeing their independence because we are now in a party. Hooray! Holy shit! They really like us. This is our. Of course, we will call yeah. alliance the space party. Of course. Of course. Awesome. So now we actually have an ally. And what this means is that any wars any of us engage in, mm -hmm. the other person will automatically join. Yeah. However, if you want to start a war, all alliance members must actually vote for it. Yeah. So you can't just start a war, drag in all your allies, and expect them to do all the heavy lifting for you. You can, you can, you can talk to me, Bjorn, but I'll, I'll come over there. We'll have some more audio issues. This is uh, really yeah. Uh, Explain it! Uh, so, if I actually want them to join a war, I'm gonna have to make it worth their while, right? I can, I could say, okay, you're gonna join my war, and I'm gonna get everything. And they're gonna be like, how about no? But if I instead say, yeah, we're gonna go to war, and you get these things, and I get these things. They're like, mm, sounds pretty good. So, if we wanted, we can now take them together and attack these guys. And I think we're gonna do that, but I want to build up a little more first. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpause. Right. So, it turns out that mixing these guys with Blorg was actually not the best idea ever. Uh, it makes everyone involved sad, because these guys want to murder all alien life, especially Blorg and Blorg apparently want not to be murdered more than they want friends. Which I think they're kind of lacking in conviction, but hmm, what are you gonna do? So, I'll let this guy stay here, but I think we're actually gonna give these guys a 
bit of autonomy. I'm just gonna move my science ships to research this stuff. Specifically, we're gonna give them their own sector. So, if you ever looked at this, you can see that there's a limit here on how many planets our empire can control. We can control five, we have four. So I don't strictly need to do this now, but I thought I'd show off the mechanic. And basically creating a sector takes a planet away from your control. So you're no longer directly controlling it. It is no longer contributing towards your direct control cap. It does, however, give it autonomy. It gets to decide what it builds, how it uses pops, and you can't really interfere. You do get to set certain priorities for them, which I will show off right now. So, I'm gonna make a sector, and we should actually explore these worlds. I'm gonna go ahead and make this into a sector. And all resources mined in this sector, both on the planet and in space, will go to the sector. And we can tax the sector a certain amount. Right now we are taxing it at 50%. We're actually gonna lower the taxes a little bit because they are not doing so great on resources. And we're gonna give them a priority, something to develop. I think we want them to develop energy credits because... No, minerals. We're gonna make them develop minerals. Blorg need minerals. Of course we do. Uh, I feel like I missed all the relevant bits. So but it's fine. I can watch it on YouTube later. Indeed. I am basically making a sector. Okay. Out of these guys. And only there. So it, this is the uh, and this, the species we can't. Yeah. No, we uh, befriended. The the logic is basically. It turns out that uh, that despite the fact that we are friends, we don't like living next to each other because yeah. they try to kill us. Ugh. Typical. I, I hear this is something friends do all the time. Yeah, so I, I just think a blorg are being a little intolerant, but mm, what are we going to do? Yeah. So, and of course, we are going to call our sector the friend zone. Mm -hmm. Because that is where our friends are. Yeah, makes sense. We're also going to recruit a governor for it, I think. Oh, can Who we do you like? Do, so we have to recruit a Blorg. We can't recruit one of their own. Uh, we could if we set our policies to allow that, actually. and that we should. Because I assume otherwise they would just hate our governor, right? Or does it matter? Uh, don't. not sure if it matters, actually. Let's put a Blorg so. on another planet. Oh, we actually can. Oh, right. We haven't yeah. researched the technology for alien leaders yet. But yeah, yeah. let's... Oh, sorry. Let's make... Let's put a Blorg on their planet. Let's mm -hmm. just do it. You realize how many friends that Blorg will have? A whole a planet worth of friends. They may end up seizing power. They, yeah, very possible. So I'm thinking the environmental engineer, because I think they have a bunch of blockers. That would be nice. So we have Jahir Alavi. Yeah. The Blur governor of the friend zone sector. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm also going to put some... Because this is not something I didn't do before, but I'm going to recruit a couple more of these guys. Well, we can only have one more. We're up to we're we're maxed ah, out on leaders. You're right, actually. So sure, I will put one on Kersoni at least. So that's. What do? No, uh, that's true. We do have a lot of scientists. Yeah, well, science and is of important. course the star of the show. Yeah, Mercedes Romero. Mercedes Romero. Probably the <laughs> coolest scientist. <laughs> Got like four friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jitsara wants to know why one of the governors were cheaper than the other two, and I think that's because that's one, that's a trait a yep. governor can have, right? Exactly. They had the eager trait, which means they're cheaper. Yeah. So. And unfortunately, because of our setup currently, we can't, uh, <laughs> we're stuck in the scene that we're in, but, uh, can you sh uh, show the factions? Because we currently have two factions. Oh, and, yes, we uh, do. And they're blocked on our face caps. Can you show them? Some ah, rings? I see, I see. Okay, yeah. Just so here are our factions. So we actually have a Kersonia succession. This guy, this guy's we had last time. Mm -hmm. They they were sad about what was it, starving and yeah, asteroid they, hitting so their world, and, which we fixed. And, and like trees trampling. It's like they're really whiny. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, they. Yeah. And we have the Tevadra no. freedom fighters led by Angeline Gilbert. Which Interesting name. Yeah. And she does not like us. For some reason, they want to be independent again. Well, maybe they shouldn't. They should have accepted the party invite. Maybe they should have done that. And right now, they're no real threat. Um, they're apparently not very attractive, which is good. Yeah. Because, because everyone likes a good party. <laughs> exactly. 
Do you know how unattractive it is to turn down party invites? Very unattractive. Don't do it. But yeah, they have a chance to gain some support, and we will deal with them if and when they become a problem. I also kind of want to recruit some defense yeah. here. No, because most of the... So, our uh, assault... Uh, our groundhuggers, do they actually impact the planet that they're on if they're on an say, unfriendly planet that we've just invited to a party? Well, yes, in the sense that these guys can rise up, mm -hmm. in which case they will spawn armies on the planet, in which case it's a good idea to have some armies defending the planet, yeah. or they will take it and declare independence. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to handle that by recruiting some defense armies. So that. basically a party police. Indeed, a Ma party police. Making sure that the party never ends. This is very important. Mm -hmm. This is the friend zone. That's where all the parties happen, yeah. or so I'm told. Yeah, I'm Blorg, I don't know these things. Friend zone right next to the Crax's Badlands. <laughs> you know where it's at. Okay, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. So what we're doing right now is I've sent my construction ship to build a bunch of stuff, and the science ships are working on analyzing mm -hmm. the debris uh, caused by the big party we had mm -hmm. around their spaceport. Yep. I'm also gonna build some more ships, and I'm thinking we're going to pick a fight with these guys. Yeah, what do we you think should. about that? Well, I think that's a good idea. The problem is, uh, the way I understand it, is that our, our friends mm -hmm. don't want to have a party with those guys. So oh, no, no. They totally do. We they just, do. We just have to let them in on... Oh, okay. So we have to... Precisely. We have to also, you know, divide the yeah. spoils of the party. So basically, they were just saying no when we were like, let's have a party, but no one builds a nightclub on any of the planets. This, it's really... <laughs> I was thinking more like, we invite them, but we don't serve them any alcohol. Yeah. We take all the drinks for ourselves, yeah. and they're just like, that's not much of a party, man. Uh, uh, Pip from uh, from Denmark wonders why we haven't explored to the right. And I don't think we are able to go there, right? right? This is also something I meant to break because I saw a lot of people asking about that. And the reason for that is that we have the, galact the end of the galactic arm here. Mm -hmm. And here's dark space. And our warp drives are limited in how far they can go in a single jump. So if we try to go here, we will end up going like that. Yeah. Which isn't gonna work. No. Research complete. So we need to basically research better uh, hyper drive, te uh, mm -hmm. sorry, warp drive technology yeah. before we can go across there and explore. I'm going to go ahead and take some from the network. And we have analyzed the debris. And I know that there are some uh, some people that want us to go really slow and explain everything, but we're trying to get things done. Yeah, so, I mean... So we're, we're trying to balance between going too fast and going too slow. Mm -hmm. So some things we're going to gloss over, but if it's really important, bring it up in chat and we'll try and answer it for you. Exactly. And, you know, we don't have that... I'm sure you're very sad about the fact that the game's release is not that far away, right? Yeah. Because none of you want to play it. So that's <laughs> sort of the reason. Yeah. We have to get somewhere. Okay. Oh, now we got more leaders, I think, right? And oh, dangerous wildlife removal. Yeah, get rid of it. We need to put them in friend zoos. Uh, we, yes, let's get some pets. We can totally get friends with pets, right? Uh, can wormhole civilizations go through dark space, I think? If the other system is within the jump range of the wormhole station, yes. So and basically more likely, but not necessarily. I think if you built a wormhole station right here, mm -hmm. you might be able to go across. Maybe not the very first one. It okay, depends a little yeah. bit how far the gap is. Typically, hyperlane ones will have a few lanes across the arm. So there might be a lane here if we had hyperlanes, but there yeah. might not. Oh, look. Phew, that's easy. We'll go ahead and research that. Almost too easy for someone like Mercedes Romero. Mm, yeah. You know, she's a star. What she do you is, expect? No. I mean, she's she's not just one star. She's five. That's true. That is true. I apologize. So we're going to survey the rest of the systems in the friend zone. Let's find what resources we can mm -hmm. provide our, our friends. And I'm just, I'm just reminded that we actually have destroyers now. Uh, I think uh, we. I think there was a uh, suggestion to call them fellowships. Oh, that's great. Uh, and I'm unfortunately I don't remember if it was on Reddit or if it was on uh, on the forums, but I, it's a good name. Regardless, whoever came yeah. up with that suggestion, you're brilliant. You're invited to the party. Yeah. So we have our fellowships, and we're gonna obviously put some better guns on them. We do have plasma throwers now. 
So I'm thinking we'll put a big plasma thrower. And we will need a little bit. Yeah, we're under... Under... Uh, underpowered. Yeah. Glorg is underpowered. Please buff. Okay, now we need some more fusion reactors. Let's see, a small one give 15, and we're 15 under. So... Now we don't have any armor, but, you know. Eh. Armor just serves to keep people away. Exactly. So we're actually going to build a few of those. We need to have a lot of minerals right now. Uh, oh, we need to upgrade our spaceport. So we will do that. And what's the... So upgrading our spaceport gives us more... Uh, a higher cap on chips. Okay, so basically your spaceport level determines a few different things. First of all, it determines how many modules you can build here. And we're mm -hmm. actually going to build some modules soon. Secondly, it determines what ship sizes you can build there. Each ship size has a certain spaceport requirement, so you can't build a battleship or even a destroyer in a level 1 spaceport. Yeah. Thirdly, it gives you more naval capacity, so you can support more ships overall without having maintenance penalties. So, you know, more spaceports is better. Good. Very good. And, whoa. What the... Fe oh. Okay, so we actually have... It b bring up the big faction yeah, Indeed. Window. Now we have the St. Natchbull Popular Alliance. Apparently all our planets want to break away. What? This is a little bit problematic. What's the... It, are, are, are they saying that we're not taking care of them? Uh... Oh, they're solitary and... They're mad about the fact that we are not allowing native enlightenment, which I don't know why we're not allowing, so I'm gonna go ahead. And what does native enlightenment mean? Okay, so this is for when you encounter primitives. We very yeah. briefly encountered primitives before they became non-primitives. Uh, there's a bunch of different things you can do with primitives. You can study them, you can probe them, you can infiltrate them, mm -hmm. you can invade them, and you can enlighten them. And what enlightening them does is that you pay a lot of energy, and it takes a bunch of time, and at the amount of time it takes depends on the current tech level, so it takes a very long time to use enlightened Stone Age primitives. Yeah. And at the end of that, they will become a spacefaring empire and your vassal. Mm -hmm. So do we have we have primitives on Saint Natch? Mm, no, or? sadly, they're just they're just angry about the theoretical possibility oh. that we couldn't enlighten primitives because you know they are Blorg, and they're like, we could potentially get friends this way. System we're also going to clear some of these blockers because... Why are they sad that we're allowing them to move? All right. Uh, oh no, they're sad that we are allow allowed to force them to move. Oh, I see. Specifically, because they're Big. not collectivists. Uh, so we don't have these... Oh, right. So these are... Yeah, we used to have this technology, but it was, uh, it was split into a bunch of different technologies. So now we no longer have this technology. Never play on the latest build. It was lost along with our heart. Okay, uh, our spaceport upgrade is done, so we're going to go ahead and build some fellowships. And that ate all our minerals. Hooray! I mean, boo! <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So how much, how much, for lack of a better term then, how, how much better are the fellowships compared to our uh, friendships? Like A fellowship is about two friendships. Okay. And it's, it varies a little bit, because a big deal of it is that you get bigger guns on bigger ships, and bigger guns are good at hitting, hitting big ships, small guns are good at hitting small ships. So, you know, a so battleship equipped with lots of small weapons can clean up a lot of corvettes, yeah. but if they so only it's, have... it's an escalation issue, basically. If you're the only one that brings fellowships to the party, yeah, good. But as soon as someone else brings, you have to bring even more fellowships. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently picking sheep techs because I want to get the next level of hyperdrive. Yeah. So what do you say? Once I have built up our fellowships, should we start a party in the United Tabadoran block? I feel like we should. Uh, because fuck those guys. Uh, Not until... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Friendship comes first. Ah, fine. Fine. Oh, 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 oh. Um, this is how the Blorg do yeah. things. Should we, should we upgrade... So our friendships have red lasers, and we have blue lasers available. Should we upgrade them? That is a very good point. Let us do that. We'll, put, we'll actually put a picking a plasma thrower on it. And a blue laser. Then we'll put, whoa. We have met some new people. I will what? Go handle that in just a second. People. people. Okay. We have received a communication from a previously unknown spacefaring empire that called themselves the Hanfelir Republic. 
They claim to have learned of our existence by listening in on the communications of another empire we are in contact with. Okay. Because this is the first time normally when we see new alien, they get like a Lambda alien when they fly through. But in this case, they've just heard about us. We haven't actually seen any of their Precisely. Things. So what this is, is that something called spread of communications. So after a while, you know, you will be boxed in by empires. You can mm -hmm. probably get yeah. civilian access and explore, but we do want knowledge of empires to yeah. kind of spread. So eventually, an empire that has contact with an empire that you have contact with, will, you will either have the chance to contact them or they will have the chance yeah. to contact you. And in this particular case, they contacted Yeah, and the us. track is bad, and Lance is like, have you heard about the Blorgs? They're super awesome. Uh, I, I think this might be reversed. Greetings, I speak for Executive Ashley Easterbrook and the wealthy elite of the Blorg commonality. You're no Blorg. You're no Blorg. First con, you're an imposter. Yeah. Anyway, we're always looking for new trading partners, and hopefully we can come to some sort of accommodation that will benefit the commerce of both our nations. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. So, we wish for nothing but being friends. We will have a look at these guys, and they are also hegemonic imperialists. That's, That's gr great. I feel like they wish for other things than trading. Mm. I feel like they are lying to us. Yeah, yeah, um, but they don't hate us, which is a good start. Yeah, you're right. Um, they have they have rivals, but, but we, we don't, don't know, know who, who they, they are. are. So yeah. they're not rivals of these guys, at least. Yeah. Uh, well, how now? Currently, can we just have a quick look and see if we're uh, because we're building up a massive fleet, but mm -hmm. so far everyone's equivalent. Uh, yep. Bastards. I mean, not everyone. I think our mushroom friends are... Oh, they're actually equivalents. I guess they have built up their navy. I mean, at this case, sort of everyone is more or less on the same power yeah. level because it's not just based on fleet strength. Yeah. The reason for this is that even if you have no fleet, if someone declares war on you, you can pump out a fleet pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So if we just said, oh, their fleet strength is low, you can beat them, and then you attack, and then it turns out that they built the fleet because they have yeah. a bunch of minerals. So we're trying not to mislead too much. But yeah, you're right. Everyone is currently about equivalent. So, you know, mm -hmm. two equivalent versus one equivalent equals not so equivalent. Yeah. So I'm feeling good about the worlds there. And we have a little bit more free capacity. So I will build another fellowship. More ships, more ships. I ship it. Welcome back. You made it to the end of the video. Good for you. Uh, if you missed any of the previous episodes, you can check them out over here. If you want to watch uh, something that's not in space, uh, why not check out uh, Jake's and Daniel's uh, single player uh, run through of Hearts of Iron 4 as Japan. You can find the first episode down there. Uh, and last but not least, make sure you don't miss any episodes of any of the Paradox Extra content. Um, make sure you subscribe. Click on the thing below me here. Um, I think that's all for now. We'll see you in the next episode. I have to go do team building stuff now.